Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, in this video, we'll be going over all of the changes and benefits of the iOS 13 Apple CarPlay upgrade in the uh, Audi MMI interface. And this is going to be specifically for cars that still don't have the touchscreen system. So these cars are the 2017 Audi A4 and Q7 to present and the 2018 to present uh, Audi Q5 and A5 family. Uh, the all roads also within that. So uh, the car we're using today is a 2019 Audi Q5 Premium Plus. What that means is you get the larger center screen with the built-in navigation as well as the full digital cockpit. So let's go ahead and begin by getting in, turning it on. Now the phone that I'm using for the tutorial is an iPhone 10 uh, running iOS 13. So I'm going to leave that right down here. Now uh, pairing it up is exactly the same as before. Uh, unfortunately in these model Audis there's no wireless CarPlay. Uh, in the 2019 A6, A7, uh, Q8, e-tron, the ones with the touchscreen and the Q3, um, if you go with a Premium Plus you do get the wireless CarPlay integration. Therefore, you can charge your phone on the wireless charge pads, which are all standard on most Premium Plus models now. And you can connect wirelessly, unfortunately, in these cars that use some sort of MMI knob interface, uh, no wireless CarPlay. So you do have to use one of the two front USB ports. So you got one here, as well as the center one in the console right down there. And to get started, you really just have to plug in the phone and you'll see activate Apple CarPlay. That hasn't changed. Go ahead and click the knob and say agree. And give it a second. You also get the um, while unlocked notification. You definitely want to allow that. And here we are. Apple CarPlay, iOS 13, and the Audi MMI system. So once you do connect the phone and do the pairing process, uh, this is what you get, you get your traditional CarPlay menu screen. Uh, before I get into the Audi specific details, let's just go over some basic new uh, interesting things with iOS 13. Uh, so now finally they allow you to run an app on the screen. So let's go ahead and fire up Spotify. And go to now playing. And then on my phone, I can go straight into messaging and before, whatever was on your phone, whatever app you chose on your phone would automatically change on that screen. So if you had a passenger texting or going through emails and you, the driver needed the Google Maps or Apple Maps on the screen, it was impossible to do. And they finally fixed that problem. So that's huge. Uh, that's a nice, nice upgrade. Um, so that's that. Now, obviously, one of the other benefits of this new system is uh, I guess what they're calling the new dashboard. So if I were to scroll all the way to the left, you can see now you have um, the uh, top menu layout of iOS 13 CarPlay. And it actually, this is currently um, based off of what events you have going on today. This will update in different ways. You always will get a map here. Uh, sometimes it'll be work, sometimes it will suggest you know, um, places that you have in your calendar. Uh, otherwise, it will just be kind of a more zoomed in uh, general location of where you currently are. Uh, but I went ahead and I put in a uh, calendar um, address to go get coffee. And you can see not only does it show up in calendar now, you also have it over here in the giant square. Uh, and as soon as I click that, it would start guiding as well as up here. And uh, this does change uh, based off of what's going on. So if I didn't have any calendar event, this would basically just be a default kind of general location. And uh, up here would be kind of like a gas, um, money, parking lot suggestions based off of your current locations. So this top screen here 
does always change, which is nice. Uh, now let's get into some of the Audi specific uh, features of iOS 13 on how you actually go through this menu in a car that's not a touchscreen. So this obviously would be more useful, you would think, with a touchscreen because you're just going to swipe between. Uh, and what people might think is to get to the other menus, you would have to actually just turn this wheel a bunch of times until you swipe over. Um, Audi threw in a shortcut. So the back button down here on the square, um, this will actually usually, if you're in an app, click it, it takes you back one step. So if you're on the home screen and you click it once, that will actually, no matter what page you're on of your apps, that will swipe you straight to that new dashboard. So if you want to get to that dashboard, just go ahead and click the back button, no matter where you are on the menu, and it brings you right to that dashboard. Now let's say you go into an app and you go pretty deep into that app. So we'll go settings, we'll go into appearance, and I want to just get back to the menu from here. So instead of clicking the back button a bunch of times, you hold it down and that will automatically get you to the top layer of your app menu. And then again, one click on the back button now will bring you to your dashboard. So instead of having to kind of clunkily go through that knob, they basically use this back button as a default to switch between your dashboard and your apps, which I find really useful. I'm glad that they did it. You do always have this bottom corner as well showing you kind of what you're currently in and this knob in uh, the Audis does actually move up down left and right so you can also do that to get to the dashboard and then you can see if you keep going all the way to the left it will highlight the three last things that you've used the three last apps that you use and then finally instead of clicking the back button you also have the option to highlight that bottom corner button and that will also switch you between dashboard and apps but I find it much more easy and intuitive just to click that back button so that's nice so let's get more into um, a media aspect of differences between iOS 12 and 13 so on this dashboard you can see whatever you're playing whether it be Apple Music or Spotify or um, you know audiobooks will pop up kind of in the center section here and you have the ability straight from here to play uh, pause or skip or go back and then you also can go into the app by clicking on the album art uh, Apple has really emphasized a lot on the album art uh, on this update so before Spotify when you had um, basically this sub menu with your play pause and fast forward rewind there would be no album art within Spotify uh, and now they give you basically half of the screen is now spot, um, album art real estate you obviously have the play, the rewind, and the fast forward, or skip. And as you can see, not only does the album art change, but the blurred background also absorbs the colors of the album art. So that changes as well. If the song is not saved, you do have a big plus button, which is now uh, you're saving to your liked music in Spotify. And then also you can say, I don't like this song. You can skip it, and it will never play it again or you can add it to your library that way as well. Going back to the dashboard. And let's go over. If I go into Apple Music now, you can see that that has even taken it a step further and now you get album art instead of the actual titles uh, in this recently added section. So if I were to go into playlists, you can see everything has an album art now right there, which just makes it look a little bit more premium and upscale. Hold down the back button again. Now, as far as usability with the virtual cockpit, so both modes have about the same usability. Unfortunately, I heard uh, there might be a rumor of Apple introducing a split screen. So in the future, they will allow you to run something on the center screen, as well as if cars have digital cockpits or center screens in the gauge cluster, will allow a separate app to run there. Um, as far as now, absolutely no one's doing that, but I did hear rumors that in the future it will allow that. You do still have the skip forward and back buttons on the steering wheel here, which is super nice, so you don't have to take your hands off. This will also mute 
and raise and lower the volume. And then finally, holding down the voice button brings up Siri. And now Siri uh, luckily doesn't block out the whole screen, uh, just kind of shows up a bar at the bottom. So let's go into this, hold down the voice button. And you can see if you're in GPS or something, it's not completely gone like it used to be. You can still see exactly what you're doing there, which is nice. Let's go back out. Now, if I were to click this, it's gonna give me an overview and then right there, click start. Otherwise you can kind of X that out if you didn't wanna actually do that. Um, so you can go straight back to your normal maps that way. Now you can see I got the other suggestions since I X'd out that suggestion there to go to the um, address in my calendar. So you can see now the gas station, parking lot, and restaurants is what usually would come up if you don't have anything in your calendar with a GPS location. And those will do exactly what you think they do. They will suggest local gas stations around your location. Uh, let's go back to apps now. So quickly in phone and messages, what used to happen would it default to voice. Now it doesn't default to Siri anymore. You just have a, a list of your favorites and you can also now scroll over to recent. And if you wanted to use the voice, you actually would have to initiate that by going into contacts. And then there is now a spot here, ask Siri to make a call. But in theory, all you really have to do is click down that voice control button and say call so-and-so from there. Let's go to uh, messages real quick. And again, does not default to Siri like it did before. Uh, and then once you go into this message, that's when the voice prompt starts. And you can also compose one here and that goes straight into voice. Who do you want to send it to? So that's the same. Overall, definitely some nice improvements. Uh, let's go into settings real quick. So in here, what used to always be a dark mode, you now have an automatic mode. So this, if I were to choose this, the headlights are currently on. I'm going to go ahead and turn them off. You can now see um, they've added kind of this white mode, which I definitely don't prefer, but some people might. And then that goes um, the same with the maps. So you can see the maps during the day is white, and then at night, it will turn the dark color. So instead of just the GPS doing so, you can have the whole interface change up and down. Now to change around, let's say you have two phones plugged into the USBs and you want it, the other one that's not chosen to be your CarPlay uh, supply. So you have to go into telephone, then you have to go the right bumper and go into connection manager. And in here, you can see Audi smartphone and it, whatever phones are currently connected to the car or have ever been connected will come up in this list and then you can go ahead and switch those checks around. So that's actually how you go about switching what phone you want connected to the CarPlay at the current moment. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please uh, leave comments down below. And uh, stay tuned for tomorrow. I'll be doing um, a bunch of different brands with this update and going over all the differences. Thank you and take care.